Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Einstein Bagels, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com. And if you're an entrepreneur running a six, seven, or eight figure business and want to grow and want to be around other top performers, this is for you. It's a group of top entrepreneurs that come together to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Rise 25 is run by myself and my co-founder, John Corcoran, who's a former White House writer under Clinton, Silicon Valley entrepreneur and attorney, and check out rise25.com. Today, I'm excited. We have Kimberly Krupe Dobbins, founder of Simple Squares Organic Nutrition Bars. She bootstrapped the company after going on a sabbatical from Morningstar. She went from making the bars in her kitchen to selling over 1 million bars in a year. And they're sold in, they're sold in Whole Foods, Starbucks, and many more. Kimberly, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jeremy. So Starbucks, that is amazing. Tell me about how you got into Starbucks. Yeah, we are, we're thrilled. Um, we had been working with the buyers at Starbucks and found out, um, I guess back in the spring that we were going to be doing a test launch in Chicago and we were thrilled and that just happened two weeks ago. So how long did it take to get that test launch? I mean, you probably were grinding for a while. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, probably by the time we started the process, um, until it finished, um, I'd say about four months working out logistics. Mm -hmm. How did they decide that they needed simple squares? Because I, like, I know they don't take many products. You know, yeah, so. I like to think it's because of the clean ingredients. We don't we yeah. don't know exactly, um, yeah. but I I'm hoping it's because of the clean ingredients and um, you know the clean profile. And I know Starbucks customers are very. Uh, health oriented and I think they've done a great job with their selection lately of placing healthy foods for for the masses yeah and at what point did you get into Whole Foods that's a huge win also it is it is so we got into Whole Foods back in 2013 I believe okay. uh, on the West Coast and we just entered the Midwest market last year nice so what does that process look like is that also a uh... A tough process um, it is a tough process you know they do regional entrance um, you can also enter at the national level but we're going in region by region and growing an area so it becomes strong and then moving forward to the next I mean that's also a big decision for you how do you decide that you even want to be in Whole Foods because there's probably advantages and there's probably some disadvantages too right because it takes a lot of capital uh, it does take capital for us it's um, definitely a lot of pros it's our target market um, you've got very you know I'd say influential uh, very well read knowledgeable people about labels and um, that's what we're all about just being transparent and just having the five ingredients and making it very simple what should people think about before going into like Whole Foods or Starbucks as a business owner uh, you mean a small food manufacturer yeah a small food manufacturer exactly yeah, I, I think a couple things. Um, one, you have to have a really solid business plan in place um, and a lot of, I'd say, tenacity. You know, everybody says, oh, you need passion and a dream, and you, you do. Um, but, you know, it's a lot of doors shutting in your face yeah. and uh, a lot of capital needed. So those are the two things I think that I would focus on. Yeah. So, Kimberly, we talked about Starbucks and Whole Foods. And we know it takes a lot of no's to get to a yes. So tell me about one of the hardest no's you got that you just had to keep going through. Yeah, actually, that's a great question because it just recently happened and I'm trying to remember the <laughs> You try and forget those real quick, right? <laughs> no, <but laughs> like, I, I can't remember off the top of my head who it was, but it was literally one of the first people we contacted in 2011. Mm -hmm. They just placed an account. Or a, really? Uh, yeah, an order this year. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, never give up. Never give up. So what do you do? What's your process for keep to keep following up without just badgering them so like we never want to talk to Kimberly again? <laughs> yeah, it's always a fine line, gray line there. Um, you know, we try to keep in touch regarding our promotions. Um, we try to offer incentives for them to purchase us, be it a, um, a discount or sale for their 
customers. Yeah. Um, we try to do demos so that we're in there, they can get a you know a feeling for the the face of who Simple Squares is. So a couple different, but mostly marketing related. Yeah. yeah. So Kimberly, you start the initial intent behind Simple Squares was just as a side project, right? Yeah. What was the initial thought process as you were creating the bars? Yeah. Well, at first it was just for my own dietary needs, and um, then I started bringing them to places like Ravinia and outdoor concerts in the summer, and people started to like them, and. Um, I thought, well, maybe there's something here. I ran them by some real picky food eaters. Right. and Like uh, your husband, they, maybe? Yeah, right. exactly. Real meat and potatoes. And, um, and he liked them. I like, well, maybe there's something there. So the initial thought was to keep it as a side business and do the farmer's markets on the weekends right. in Chicago. Right. Uh, but we weren't able to get into the farmer's market, so plan B was mass. Was Starbucks. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. We couldn't get into farmer's market, but we got into Starbucks. Exactly. Go figure. <laughs> Um, when did you know that this you were going to turn this into a business? Uh, so I incorporated in 2009. Um, so you were beginning- still at Morningstar at the time. Still at Morningstar, yeah. yeah. And I stayed at Morningstar till 2011. Right. So it took two years to get the product up and running on the back end. Yeah. What What did the daily routine look like for you, working the full time job and also starting up Simple Squares? It, w- it was long, long days. Um, you know, I think every day I would get up early, work on Simple Squares, go to the office, do my job, come home, work on Simple Squares. But I loved it. It was fun. It was a hot, you know, a hobby at that point. Yeah. And, um, I-, I loved it. So, so how late were you? Were you up? I want to hear like the real, you know, the entrepreneurial scars here. Entrepreneurial. <laughs> well, the problem is I wake up super early. Oh, so you do? What time you wake up usually? Probably three or four. Wow. Uh, so it was a lot of beforehand work. I thought, you know, at night, 10 or 11, nothing crazy. What were some of the things you had to put in place to get it to where you could quit your job? Like, what were you working on, like manufacturing and, and packaging? T- talk about some of those initial steps you needed to get it actually to where you could launch it. Yeah. And actually, Morningstar was great because they knew. Um, well, let me back up. I guess so. Two thousand nine, uh, we incorporated, and then in twenty, I guess most of two thousand nine into the beginning part of twenty ten, we found a co-packer, and um, but it took us about a year to do so. Really, a whole year? Wow. Yeah, I tried by on my own for a while, and really couldn't find anyone. So then I uh, worked with somebody to help me. Yeah, I, I read that you there was a consultant, right? That yes. yes. And that's actually a funny story. So I call, um, I was calling a lot of food incubators and, you know, back then it wasn't that long ago, but people weren't advertising that they were co-packing on their websites. What would they advertise? What do they say? Oh, they would just advertise their products or advertise. Yeah. But they wouldn't say they would do it for other people. And, um, so I was calling food incubators and I called the Land Lakes food incubator up in Minnesota, the butter company. And they were so kind. They were so nice. I said, you know, Hey, I'd love to work with you. I have this kitchen idea. And they're like, great. You know, are, are you a million dollars in sales? And I was like, no, <laughs> you know, I don't even have a commercial recipe. And she, they pointed me in the direction of consultant. Yeah. Okay. And so in that, even with the consultant, it still took a year to find the right co-packer. Uh, no. I or was that with the process? That was with the process. I gotcha. Yep. That's so talk about the best advice you got from the, the consultant. Best advice I got from the consultant. Um, I think, actually just being introduced to his contacts and referrals went a long way. So I think that was probably the best and most productive experience working with them. Okay. So talk, yeah. Talk about after you quit. Yes. What does that feel like? Was that hard? Was that easy for you? This is where Morningstar came in great. So in late 2010, October, I took a leave of absence for three months to see if I could make this work. And they were, you know, that's amazing. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Morningstar, Joe Mansueto, the founder, is an entrepreneur himself, and right. the whole the whole company is very entrepreneurial spirit. So, right. I was nervous about asking, but they said yes. And um, after the three month trial, I realized that you know there might be something here, and um, went in and and resigned, stay on for three months to help with the transition, but um, knew that I was going to give it a go. So, what happened at three months that you knew you should give it a go? Uh, I was literally, you know, pounding the pavement, calling people, getting sales. Um, you know, I, one thing that had happened, we did our first 
pilot launch in uh, 2010 and took a ton of orders. You know, these were wrappers with silver, silver wrappers with stickers on them. It didn't look very professional, but we were. It's the first first version. It was the first version right. and we were getting sales. So we send everything out. We took a ton of orders at our first trade show. And then what happened was six weeks later, uh, the packages started leaking oil. So we had the to actual go, packages. Yeah. Yeah. So we had to go back to the drawing board for eight months until we could figure out the formula. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So, you know, in that time period, how do you decide what your first run's going to be? Like, do you take the orders and then produce or do you just produce and then you're just tenacious and you know you're going to get on the phone and sell it? Ideally, it'd be great to have the orders. And luckily, we had a lot. People were so patient with us. They said, we completely understand. Call us when you're up and running. And a lot of them really did honor their commitment into to bringing in the product. Yeah. So you try to sell it before you actually had the, the product in hand? Or the well, I tried to sell the pilot bars. Right. So, you know, I had a product that people could taste and touch and we got good feedback. So then it made me feel more comfortable to move forward with the first purchase order. So, you know, Kimberly, you talk about the, the packages leaking. That's painful, right? Pain. So yeah. talk about what were you thinking at the time and was there, you know, what was going through your head when you get these packages? I mean, you've probably spent several years already at this point, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, you, you know, I think the first thing that goes through your mind is what have I done? <laughs> um, but it was a, you know, relatively easy fix. And we were mm -hmm. able to um, finally, you know, formulate it to the point where that wasn't an issue anymore. Yeah. So what, what were some other bumps in the road that, Going back, you would have warned Kimberly about. So there was the the formulation. Yes. What, what else um, with the the business or product that um, you know that you had to overcome? I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, I always say being an entrepreneur, there's a the highs can be really high and the lows can be really low. Yeah. Um, and I it, part of me feels like it's cyclical too. You know, every time there was something new that I was not expecting. Um, and just having to learn that process. And I think by default of having your own business, you become, it's like getting an MBA, but in real life, you know, you're, yeah. I've learned more about legal than I've ever wanted to know, product development, marketing, sales. So it's, um, you know, I think it's just different, different valleys that you, peaks and valleys that you come across. What did you learn from customers from feedback? Cause you have, I see, I'm curious of what was your first bar and then how did you expand to the different flavors because you have some really interesting flavors with the rosemary and the sage talk about where did it start and then how did you decide where to expand yes yeah, so we you know our whole basis is five simple ingredients and infused with herbs and yeah. usually herbs or spices that are functional that help your body in some form or fashion They're healing you yeah. To the coconut bar, we added sage or an, and rosemary. You know, when we first launched, we launched as a um, healthy confection for people that could not do gluten and dairy. Mm. And what we found after about a year was that probably 98% of people didn't weren't familiar with what a confection was. And if they were going to go for something sweet, they would go for the Snickers bar or an ice cream sundae. Um, and, you know, we looked like a bar. We felt like a bar. All the buyers thought we tasted like a bar. So we really morphed into this um, organic nutrition bar space. Um, and then after that, we just wanted to, again, keep it very clean, yeah. keep it very simple, and go with trends of what people were looking at in the spice world. Yeah, so it cut out a little bit in the very beginning. What was the first bar that you launched? Coconut sage. The coconut, oh, oh you did? Okay, yep. really? Well, yep. That was the first one? Yes. Wow, okay, so what was the next one after that? Uh, well, so it was in stages. So coconut, sage, and rosemary were the first round. Uh, we brought cinnamon clove on board the next year. Coffee. So how do you decide on that? Tell me about how do you decide on cinnamon clove? Is it from just what you, you discover with your research or is it from, from customer feedback? So Sometimes it's from customer feedback. We added a chocolate chip this year. Um, people love chocolate. So <laughs> we're giving them chocolate. But... Um, Prior to that, it was really just me experimenting in the kitchen. You know, we tried a lavender bar that you would think would go well, lavender and honey, uh, and it was awful. Um, really? So it was really just going to the farmer's markets in the summers and and trying different things in the food processor, and if they work, then taking it to the commercial level and see if it still works. What's the most popular bar? Coconut. Coconut is. Yep. Yeah. Followed by chocolate chip. So Simple Square, originally 
it was called the sabbatical bar? Sabbaticals. Yep. Sabbaticals. Yes. So what prompted the name change? I loved the name, but um, I'm not in sales and marketing. And <laughs> uh, I think the fear was that we thought too many people might not know what a sabbatical was. Um, and, you know, the reason I was going to call it sabbatical is because I had come up with this journey on my sabbatical from Morningstar. Right. right. Um, but then, you know, when we just dissected it, and we're like, you know, what are we? Bring it down to the basics. And it was one more simple. And we're in the, we were the first square shaped bar on the market. And how hard was it to get that domain? Was that available? Simple squares domain was available? It was. Wow. Yeah. I thought there was going to be a good story behind that because that seems like a premium domain. Well, it's funny. You know, back then, nobody was doing savory and nobody was doing anything squared. And now I feel like it's it's uh, abundant. So now that you've, you know, many years of... Uh, you know, the scars and the experience, what big mistakes do you see other founders, e-commerce, food companies making? I think sometimes it's they don't know what they don't know, and I think we all go through that. Um, but the power of back-end marketing online, you know, with SEO and mm -hmm. um, social media, and th there's just so much to it. And, you know, I think I'm fortunate being in 1871 right now is at a tech incubator. I've learned so much. Um, and it's opened my eyes. And I, I think it's probably that unknown that people don't know about how powerful the internet is for your business. Who do you consider your mentors now that you go to? Yeah, I have a couple of them. Um, definitely my dad, great businessman, learned a ton from yeah. him. What's some, what's the, one of the best pieces of advice he's given you? Oh, there's so many. Um, Uh, best piece of advice that he has given me. Or some of the things even growing up of what he instilled in you. What, what did you see him doing that, that you saw, I want to be like that or I want to embody that? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think one thing is to always, um, you know, remember where you came from and, and, and be nice to people. You know, it's um, sometimes I, I see people getting so angry over a situation and it's, it's not going to change it. It's going to if anything, probably make it worse. Right. Um, so, you know, just to, just to be, I know there's a song out right now that says it, but to be humble and kind and, um, you know, firm when you need to be, but always take things in a, a, a positive light. So was your dad an entrepreneur or what, what did he do? He was actually in uh, the graphic arts business for hmm. many years and then uh, moved into M&A. Yeah. Okay. Who else would you consider business or, or life mentors? Your yeah. Your dad? Uh, yes. dad, definitely Joe Mansueto, the founder of Morningstar. Um, so inspirational. It's really, you can feel that entrepreneurial spirit that really carries down through the organization and it's a wonderful place to work. Um, I'm also uh, unofficially mentored, I guess, by um, the founder of Lara Bar's father. Oh, really? William American, um, again, has taught me a lot in the food space. Um, you How know, did that relationship come come about? So he, they're not located in in Illinois, are they? No, they're okay. A couple. Okay. Yeah, um, you know it was funny because they it was the first trade show, uh, Natural Products Expo East that I was not attending personally because I go to all the shows, and um, my parents were there and they ran into him and made an instant connection. And then hmm. the next show they went to for some reason I wasn't there, which was odd. Um, and they talked again. He's like, I don't really think Kimberly exists. Right, so, exactly. <laughs> when we finally met, it was like, oh, yeah, you, you really are there. And, you know, they're big fans of Simple Squares. I, In my opinion, you know, it's, those are two of the cleanest bars out there, Lara Bar and Simple Squares. For sure. Yeah. What, uh, what, what, tell me about a conversation and um, between you and him. What type of, I guess, where you had a question about something and you were trying to get some advice um, let's see. Gosh, there've been so many, um, going back to the early years, uh, Cause it's so invaluable, you know, that, that experience, that relationship, I mean, Lara Bar is, is, I mean, one of the best bars also, um, Absolutely. Yeah. you know, I, I think probably 
you know, it's same in my family too. It all goes back to relationships. Yep. And he was telling me a story about um, Laura was actually at the trade show as well. And she was up in the booth and um, they had a great setup. It was almost like a tree house and they were raised up and she was playing the guitar and like, it, it was really a connection with a person. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, her story is interesting. She worked at Whole Foods and then went out and tried this bar. And I, I think um, just always remembering that, you know, business is relationship building and networking. And I think that's, you know, you asked before about what sometimes people miss. And I think, um, I think, that can sometimes be overlooked. And from a sales perspective, yeah. that's a downfall. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, for you, what's on the horizon? What are you working on now for, for Simple Squares? Yeah, actually really excited. So we're doing product and line extensions, um, which we're really looking forward to. And some interesting new channels, uh, you know, other than grocery that we're getting ready to launch in. So what do you mean by product and line extension? Different types of product other than the, the bars or... Uh, so we're coming out with some new flavor profiles for okay. the books and then looking at different um, line extensions. So it's still under the simple umbrella, very simple, very clean, uh, but something different than a bar. So what's your process for launching a new flavor? Do you bring a couple of your friends and family? Do you, tr I mean, what's, uh, how do you decide, okay, this is going to make it or this is not, you know, maybe it's not the extreme, like the lavender, like this is just not good, but yeah. it's, it's on the cusp of maybe you think it's good. Yeah. Well, I'm always trying to think. Um, so I had gone uh, to get my holistic um, health counseling certificate. And as a result of that, I'm very conscious about what I eat. And I honestly believe we are what we eat. So anytime, you know, I'm again at the farmer's market or hear about a new herb or spice, I think, gee, I wonder if that would work in simple squares. Um, and then I test it first. And if it's, if it's appealing, you know, I will definitely give it out to friends and family. And if we get a consensus that it's a go, then we'll move forward with it. So there's a certain number of products that you'd like to, or flavors that you'd like to release, or does it just come to you if you, if you come across one that, you know, inspires you? I don't have a particular number set, yeah. but I like what different brands have done where they've, you know, started with their basic bar line, but then they've been able to add to it. And I, you know, either call it a, not a different name, but um, I think Larabar actually did a great job with that. They had the regular Larabars, but then they had a bunch of other uh, bar lines that I thought was was brilliant. And then you mentioned different channels also, right? You go so Whole Foods, Starbucks. Where? What's another good story, Kimberly, that you got into a channel? Because I know there's a you. I think I read maybe you're in more than three thousand stores, or maybe by this time it's more than that. Um, what's one of those good stories that you're proud that you just were persistent and you finally got into to one of these places? I'd say, so right now we're in natural grocery. That's considered our channel. Mm -hmm. Um, conventional is something completely different. Uh, well, not completely different, but it's, um, you know, different, different type of demographic. Um, and there's all sorts of channels. There's, you know, convenience store, there's mass market like, um, Target or Costco, mm -hmm. Um, so there's so many different avenues that you can go. And I'd say right now, probably the, the biggest accomplishment I would say is getting into that coffee convenience channel of, we're actually in a lot of, um, you know, coffee tea type shops. So I think it's a good fit. Mm -hmm. What about the online space? How does that look for simple squares? It's actually great. And we're not exactly sure how it happened, but we're thrilled it did. Um, Amazon is, a uh, large part of our business and um it really happened overnight and uh you know we, we talked to them and there's a lot of metrics and it's really you know not a uh not a science you can pin down on your own but um amazon's definitely our largest online trafficker mm -hmm. and then is that distributor selling it or do you only sell it directly through amazon we sell directly to them Okay. Oh, directly to them. I gotcha. Yeah. And what other channels have you thought about or do you sell online that, that you feel work? So Amazon's the biggest one online. Obviously, they're they're an empire when it comes to people are just buying stuff on Amazon. What else? Yep. Uh, we were working with um, Abe's Market. Are you familiar with them? Yeah. Actually? Yeah. That's like pretty much, you know, the top of the, the health food chain, right? For online. Yeah. yeah. You were, they were actually just bought by Direct Eats. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's another great avenue. You know, a lot of people are moving in that direction mm -hmm. or food online. And 
um, yeah, that was actually a great, and, and they had a wonderful site, you know, a lot of um, attributes about the product and for really conscientious uh, shoppers, I think, I think that was a great idea. Yeah. Any other worthwhile channels online? Um, online channels, we've gotten into some um, sports online channels, uh, like Performance Bike. Nice. Um, yeah. So, you know, our product is really geared towards individuals that are looking for clean, sustainable energy. So it's not going to be a bar that's, you know, filled with rice puffs or uh, brown rice syrup. You know, Talk about that for a second, actually, because I think people, some people are educated, some people aren't. Yep. You know, and they would read something and think, oh, this is healthy. What are yeah. some of the misconceptions with bars that people put stuff in them and it's maybe not as clean as people think. Yeah. You know, we try to go for minimally processed ingredients. Right. So. I mean, you only have four ingredients or something. I mean, it's just like nuts, honey, sea salt, and like an herb, right? And I mean, vanilla. yep. Yeah. And the coconut doesn't even have the herb. So it's just four. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, it's interesting. So there's a lot of things out there. Um, uh, brown rice syrup, uh, organic brown rice syrup. I think right. people think it's healthier because it's brown rice. Um, but again, very processed. Same with agave. I know that's, um, you know, become a substitute for sugar. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's also very highly processed. So it's, I think you need to be really careful about the ingredients that, you know, you're looking at, know what they are. Um, but then you have a lot of fillers. You know, there are certain bars out there that they taste good and they yeah. have organic rice puffs. But, and again, it depends. Everybody's body and diet is different. For sure. But, for me, if I were to eat a rice crisp bar, I'd be full in it. I'd be yeah. hungry in an hour. What do people use as fillers? So they're granite rice crisp. What else? Yeah, anything that's puffed. So puffed corn, puffed rice, puffed amaranth. Again, things that sound really good for you. Um, if you put it's... organic in front of it, it sounds good for you, right? <laughs> right. Organic right. brown rice syrup. Oh, it must be good. It's organic, right? And I, th I think, yeah, I think, you know, it's it. It's all in marketing, and yeah. I think, um, and again, that's why we're trying to be totally transparent, and you know, not have any names on there that you can't uh, pronounce or you don't know what it is. You know, sometimes even vitamin E has a uh, a name, and you look at it, and people are like, "Well, what is that?" Right, for sure. And you know, doing the research too, Kimberly, it seems like um, I'm interested in your take on the different shows. It seems like you, like you said before, you always go to the trade shows. What ones are worthwhile? For you yeah um definitely the natural product shows those are where you have a range of products from pet food to uh, personal health care to regular food anything that's in the green natural space would be at those shows um you've also got the fancy foods shows and those are really gourmet artisanal a uh, lot of international flair there um I mean, there's so many shows. Then you can move on to consumer shows. You can really just depends, I guess, on what you're trying to accomplish. Are you yeah. looking for buyers? Are you looking for consumers? Are you looking for both? When so was I, the first time you've you do you always go and have a booth there, or just depends? Uh, it depends on the year and depends on the show. Yeah. So what's yeah. been the most fruitful show that you've attended? I'd say the Natural Products Expo West in Anaheim. Okay. Was there a certain yeah. year that it's like, this is it, they exploded, they uh, helped explode the sales? You know, it's funny. There's always, always one like huge deal that comes through. And, you know, you walk away sometimes and you're like, oh, I don't know if the show was worth it. And then three weeks later, you'll get a call and you're like, it was so worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes you think you always have to go to those ones. I know, I know. Exactly. What um, software and tools do you use to run the, the business online? Yeah, or online and offline. Yeah, you know, it's it's all mostly prepackaged, I'd say. Um, we have an online CRM system that we love. We yeah. use a... Is uh, it custom or is it... You can customize parts of it, okay. but it's but it's uh, not a custom solution. Okay. And then um, we actually use for financing, we use uh, QuickBooks Remote Desktop which is fantastic. So everything can be done remote today, which is so great. So, um, you know, some folks work remotely and that's not a problem because of all the tools and uh, items necessary or available to us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then what do you use for a shopping cart, like for the site? Uh, Big Commerce. Big Commerce. Okay. Yeah, it looks, it looks nice. It's a nice checkout process and everything. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to make it simple. 
Yeah, for sure. And besides the the coconut, what's the second most popular? What do people like? Uh, it's a tie between chocolate chip and cinnamon clove. Cinnamon clove. Okay, nice. Um, you know, Kimberly, thank you so much. I want to point. Pe- I have one last question. I want to point people towards the site. Where should people check out Simple Squares? Obviously, simplesquares.com. Anywhere else that they should check out on the site or or anywhere else on on the web. Yeah, I think um, definitely Amazon. Um, you know, there's there's so many things available on there. Um, we have a YouTube channel if you want to check out some of our videos. Definitely Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, and uh, Pinterest. Yeah. You know, Kimberly, since this is the e-commerce mastery series, I always ask what's been the lowest moment and what's been the proudest moment? Okay. What's been the lowest moment and how you push through? I think the lowest moment for me, because it was before we got started, was the, the leaking of the packages. Yeah. The, um, you know, you, you have all this momentum. That's painful. Years in the making. Yeah. And then you're thinking, is this all going to fall apart right now before I even launch? <laughs> what do you think happened there? Because you, it's not like you had made a lot of different bars and that hadn't happened before. What, what do you think it was? It was more in our uh, process of how we were actually laying out the bars. Um, so, yeah, all part of the extrusion. Wow. Because it also makes me think, well, did, was it maybe the packaging or was definitely the bar at the time? Were you thinking anything else was the problem? No, it was definitely the ingredients. You knew, yeah. Yeah. And then, so what do you do? How do you react to that? Like as a business owner, entrepreneur, you know, do you take like a, a day just to like, I don't want to think about it? Or are you immediately calling someone? What did you do at the time when, if you remember, when you, you got the call? Um, so, well, it, it's actually funny. I didn't get the call. I went to open a box to ship to a customer. <laughs> and it was, it was dripping. So I was like, oh, this isn't good. Um, so I immediately called the co-packer. And, uh, you know, we tried to work through yeah, it. Yeah. And, um, obviously didn't solve it that day, but you know, they got the R and D team. I have a wonderful manufacturer. They got the R and D team together. Um, and we were able to, you know, try different scenarios, get back into the schedule to do another pilot and see if it would work. And, um, but yeah, it took probably eight months. Well, maybe not that long, but by the time it, by the time we got to launch, launch. Yeah. 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 we yeah. figured it out earlier, which was good. Yeah. So yeah. you just end up eating 2,000 bars? Like what happens to those bars? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you have a batch that goes bad, I'm going to drive over. Tell me and I'll, I'll buy them and eat them. <laughs> it's so funny you say that because um, this is horrible. I mean, we did. We had a lot of bars left over and they're still sitting at, you know, my parents' house in New Jersey. And my dad, every now and then will call me and be like, I'm just trying one of those pilot bars, and they're not bad. I'm right. Like, it's been five years. You right. can't. You anymore. should not be. Eat. Yeah, like you need to get rid of those. Hey, maybe the, maybe the oil preserved it. Maybe you're onto something there. Well, that's the thing. It could be a natural. The honey is a natural preservative. So yeah, but every time he calls me and tells me that, I'm like, you, it's time to stop. <laughs> we can eat the loss at this point. <laughs> right. Literally. What about the proudest moment? Hmm. Proudest moment. a great question um the proudest moment i would say we were um interviewed by the new york times Mm. for a group called the story exchange and it's about yeah i saw that it was really good Yeah, yeah i think that was i you know i was really proud of that i was proud of where we you know how we had grown up until that point um you know, some days you wake up and you're just proud to still be in business. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, yeah, I think working with the story exchange in the New York Times was a, um, a proud moment. What did it feel like, though? I don't know who you got the call from about Starbucks. How did you find out about that? Oh, it's so embarrassing. Um, we were at Natural Products Expo West and this uh, the buyer, I didn't know it was the buyer, but the buyer comes up to me and she's like, Kimberly, hey. And I was like, oh, I must know her, you know, so I leaned in, I gave her a big kiss, and uh, she's like, hey, I'm, you know, so-and-so, the buyer for Starbucks, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm more That's what got you in, that's a good thing. Let's <laughs> hope so, so, but yeah, um, so we found out there, and 
Yeah, I've kind of been working. You mean she just went up to you after they had placed the order telling you she was the buyer or what? No, it was just to say we've decided um, that oh. we moved forward. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, it was just that first initial. But again, I, she was so friendly and I thought she knew me and I'm, you know, a very um, passionate person. And so I gave her, you know, a big hug and then she told me who she was. And yeah. I, I think I was about three shades of purple. How does that feel, though? She comes up to you and this is, you know, what, six years in the making? Um, yeah, well, we I, uh, I need to go back and look when we first initially touched base with them. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it was a it was a great feeling and it was very unexpected. So um, we were thrilled. Yeah. So what else? What is uh, what should we leave people with? Let's see. So for people starting their own businesses, again, I think it goes back to, you know, bottom line is going to be numbers, have a really solid plan in place for not only, um, you know, the growth of your company, but also how you're going to finance it. Um, yeah. I was fortunate enough to be able to bootstrap for four years and then we uh, took on investment last year. Oh, wow. Congratulations. How do you decide to take on investment or not? Just you're uh, growing so quickly. I, I think it's to keep up with scale and, yeah. you know, in order for us to be able to continue and just work on cash flows um, and be able to look at new product development, I think you can either go, it doesn't have to be one of two ways, but the two most popular routes are gonna be grow it slower and organically and don't take on investors or pedal to the metal, you know, we're gonna ramp it up. Sure, um, and sure. it's, it's different for every business. Yeah, so yeah. Say definitely that and then again, going back to kind of being persistent and not shutting down when people close the door on you because there will be several of those and yeah riding yeah. riding the wave Kimberly thank you so much hugely valuable everyone should check out simplesquares.com I appreciate it thank you thank you so much have a great day